I think, I think it, the anecdotal evidence suggests that it is a serious problem. It's very difficult to measure counterfeiting. Obviously, I mean, crooks don't usually declare what they're doing. Um, but we have anecdotal evidence um, regarding the level of counterfeiting within the EU. It, it affects many sectors, but what is particularly interesting for ICT devices is that they enter into many other products. So if you like, the counterfeiting uh, of these devices has enormous spillover effects into the authenticity and the use of those products. So in that sense, we, we believe that this is a very important issue and that's why I'm here today, as much to learn than to actually uh, demonstrate what we're doing, so that's the reason. Has the EU got to specific legislation that uh, you know, combats the counterfeit of we, products? Yes, we, we have, I mean obviously we have all the different rules regarding registration of uh, different IP rights, etc. But as regards enforcement, we have one European directive which deals with the, uh, harmonizes the procedures uh, for civil redress, so uh, civil redress measures in our member states' courts. It, it's minimal harmonization, of course, the member states have, are sovereign in this area. Um, so, but we do have a regulatory framework in, in that sense. Um, it, as regards criminal penalties, that's very much left to our member states to deal with. Um, but we are developing uh, other uh, measures and in particular I'm here today, I spoke yesterday about an action plan against uh, counterfeiting and IPR infringements more generally, uh, which we adopted in July and which really looks at how to develop work with different partners, uh, encourage cross-border uh, agreements between governments and enforcement agencies, but also with industry to apply best practices maybe to reduce the threat of counterfeiting. Uh, two of the issues which I signaled, which I think are particularly important to, to raise here, is um, a, a need to look really at better use of supply chain auditing as a means to reduce the risk uh, of counterfeits entering into the market, so that's a big issue. Uh, this industry, or the semiconductor industry at least, has been quite advanced in that. The aviation industry uh, has, has put very strict standards in that area. But again, the idea is to see whether that could be rolled out again uh, across many other sectors. And the other area that we're looking at is looking downstream at where products are sold or distributed. Um, looking at encouraging more intermediaries, so whether it's distributors, um, online suppliers, etc., to see if they can apply due diligence to reduce again the promotion of counterfeit products um, and stop the possibility of those products again from entering into the market. At European level, we, we call for proportionate sanctions. Uh, that's as far as we can go. Um, and certainly the level of damages which can be afforded in, in civil cases varies still. Uh, it's true that rights holders very often complain about that, that the, the, the damages they receive are not sufficient in terms, in terms of dissuasion, but even to cover the harm caused to their own businesses. Uh, it's something which certainly again can be discussed between governments. I think governments are receptive to this issue. Uh, more and more, speaking of our member states in the EU, um, they recognise that sanctioning is important. To give one example, the United Kingdom last year uh, made uh, the breach of designs uh, a criminal offence. It wasn't until that time in that country. So I think that there is a growing awareness that, that counterfeiting uh, is a, a serious crime. Um, it certainly affects governments in terms of lost tax revenue, uh, it, it certainly encourages grey economy working, etc. So, um, you know, in that sense, I think there is a general recognition that there's maybe more to be done in that area, but we don't harmonise that specifically. The other point you raised also, which is a real issue even within the single market of the European Union, is the fact that the, the counterfeiter can cross borders very, very rapidly. So, if you restrict his operations, in one member state he will move to another and trade from there. And there we're certainly looking again at how we can improve cross-border redress 
um, where again there are civil uh, law procedures and uh, there is but there is a belief there that there needs to be better cooperation there between the judiciary as well um, to get faster actions across uh, borders of the community. So that's another area that we are looking at as well. I think there is, one has to be careful here because I think, uh, and it's come through in the, in the meeting yesterday uh, as well as this morning, it is clear that consumers, there is also an issue of accessibility to product. And although very often we, we talk about this for developing countries, I think that's also an issue in the European Union. Um, we can't say that certain consumers don't at times when we're talking about counterfeits, for example, in the area of clothes, sportswear, etc. They probably know that if they're buying, for example, off the internet something which is 50% cheaper, to, to, to take a hypothetical example uh, of the actual traded uh, product, that they're probably buying a counterfeit. Now, that, that's, that's an issue, and, and in fact, we have established a Euro what we call the European Observatory Against IPR Infringements in uh, the European Trademark Agency called the Office of Harmonization in the Internal Market in Alicante, which is looking and has done some very good work to analyze, first of all, consumer perception so of the problem, what is the cost of the problem in particular, um, and now increasingly looking at how to improve awareness campaigns um, to show the risks. I, you know, it's not just a question of very often people say, oh, there's a health risk, etc., to try and scare people. I don't think that works that well. Um, I think far more often it's interesting to show to people that this actually costs in terms of jobs, employment possibilities. Um, so that they're really looking at, in this observatory, with industry, it's quite an interesting body because it brings industry and our member states' enforcement authorities together, and, and they discuss, if you like, best practice on how to improve awareness of the problem. Throughout the chain, by the way, it's not just final consumers, uh, it can be businesses in the supply chain who, who don't realise the risk that there are counterfeits there. Um, and also enforcement authorities. So they do an overall, they're looking at the whole supply chain and how to improve awareness throughout uh, that chain.